Welcome to wait. You know what, dude? You'll never guess what I'm doing right now. When was the last time you said the full sentence at the start? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, and this also won't count because um, what I have done here is gotten <laughs> all ready to record. You and I just had a great little sort of tete a tete, um, and then we do like I, you know you know what we do is I feel like we do the late night TV thing where you do like the assistant does a warm up interview yeah. with the guests. We <laughs> totally. do that to each other. Yeah, we're just like okay now, like you know, I'll, I'll look, you know, the blood's flowing, except that. Um, you know, I, I ate a snack through that entire thing. I got myself a water. Um, and only when I started to say welcome to and I looked to make sure I was directing it into my microphone did I realize I am not speaking into a microphone right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm recording this, but I'm recording it through the like little tiny mic in my earbud. <laughs> I was wondering why, if you weren't recording it, why you were still talking to me in like podcast voice <laughs> yeah. and not regular voice. I started, anyway, uh, you'll just give me uh, a moment to uh, plug in my microphone and then we can start again. All right. <laughs> oh, Chewbacca died. And I'm, <laughs> I'm good again. <laughs> oh shit! I just like what, I was walking <laughs> back here with the mic, and uh, Ashley was like, "What? What happened?" And I was like, ah, "I just didn't didn't have the mic." She's like, "How high?" <laughs> I'm not high at all. I'm coming from work. Yeah, probably high at work. Yeah, but that's yeah. probably a thing. You're probably out with some weed execs. Yeah, that's right. Doing weed biz. Okay. Um, <laughs> so welcome to Blake 155, uh, the internet's only podcast that uh, has ever had Mike, Mark Hoppus Mike on Mike optional. <laughs> yeah, you don't even need it. That's it. We're just so casual. No shirt, no shoes, no mic, no problem. The Blake 155 promise. No, no mic. Some Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's the new name of our show. Damn, that's good. <laughs> We're really going to uh, make our mark with that one. <laughs> Finally. So I, I don't, I don't want to do any fake banter that ignores the elephant in the room here, which is we got Mark Hoppus on our podcast last week, and it was insanely sick. <laughs> yeah. So can you walk me through your experience <laughs> The night of the hoppus, Josiah. Because <laughs> yeah, I've noticed I, also I experienced it in, in, a, in a in a very particular way, which I am kind of grateful for. Even though I wish I'd been able to sort of participate more directly. Like I feel like I was getting it all in this extremely bizarre secondhand fashion, and it, it will therefore always be a memorable night in my life. Yeah, that I mean, it was really funny. I had to, like, message a bunch of people. I was panicking. Okay, here's what happened. I don't know if you know this about me, but I spend a lot of time on the computer and on the Internet. It's never come up before. Yeah. Usually, I mean, look, I know I love to go uh, sit by a stream and have a picnic and yeah. go for a, a hike and... I mean, I don't even know how to pretend that I go outside. I don't even know what people <laughs> like, do out Jesus there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> truly spoken like a man who's never been outside. I used to, when I used to smoke cigs, um, when there, when Sig Joe's was a guy, that was like my way of going. I'd be like, oh, it's such a nice day outside. I'm going to go <laughs> smoke go cigs. Smoke. <laughs> that is like a benefit to smoking, though. That's real. Yeah, and then people always, like, resent the smoker at their work. Like, oh, he gets to have a break uh, yeah, more often than me. <laughs> like, come yeah. on. Start smoking. None of, us, none of us are doing any work anyways. It's fine. <laughs> it's a lie, yeah. <laughs> I just uh, have to peel. That's how I, like, get out of, like, uh, social situations. You know, if you're at a show. Like, I, I was always envious of smokers because you could go outside, like, logically at the show. Whereas if you just go outside to, like, not smoke, it's, it's I think, weird, you know? Like, I need some air. Like, what are you... You're yeah, an it's anxiety that, attack. Like that is what I do now, and it's very strange. And yeah. I'm also sober the whole time. I mean, going to shows is horrible. Yeah. Um, anyways, life. what are we talking about? Mark Hoppus. We're talking about Mark Hoppus. Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't remember exactly what happened, except that Mark's kind of like, like you know how he does that thing where he's like, oh, I'm waiting for well, I don't know what what would he be waiting for. He's um, always waiting for his coffee, but his coffee is going to take 20 minutes or something. Like, he's got a very involved yeah, he an celebrity interest. coffee order. Yeah, that's true. I feel I like it's, it's often that, right? Like, it's, it's these 20-minute increments uh, where he's often waiting for something that I would assume might take a minute. 
And also, like, I mean, I got to say, even just with the kinds of reply guys that we get is already so frustrating that, like, for him, I can only imagine for him to just be like, yo, I'll answer questions. And then he has to, like, scroll through all this shit. Yeah. (laughs) Like, did you see that James Corden AMA a couple days ago where he just got fucking dunked all over? I don't think anyone. No, but it sounds amazing. I don't think he ever answered a single thing because it was so incredibly cruel about how much he saw. No, like, it was like. Oh, yeah, someone asked for a selfie and you basically told them to fuck off and, like, you're so mean. It was all about how mean he is. That's amazing. Um, I love, yeah, like, people like that who's entirely sort of carefully cultivated, um, you know, brand is is sort of uh, just charming and exceedingly kind. And they are <laughs> – and everyone around them knows that they're a dick. Like, I just can't imagine being someone who works on one of his horrible shows. <laughs> uh, it just – Understanding that his actual sort of real life persona is um, so cruel, seemingly. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was t- kind of talking about your on mic voice versus your off mic voice earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind Where of, I'm kind of exceedingly <laughs> cruel off mic. We've established um, that actually. So Mark was doing his thing, like, oh, I'm waiting for. Uh, I can't even think of, like, a funny thing he'd be waiting for right now. I think also because I don't want to be mean to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, At least during yeah. Mark season. He, he um, might listen to this episode. Yeah, but if he listens to the fault, to the post show. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, so he did that thing where he's like, uh, I'm waiting for, you know, insert something funny. And then there's this <laughs> n- new guy in the nation named... Uh, the realtor of the pod. Yeah, they, I mean, I think he might. I don't even think he's the first realtor, but he's the realtor. Unfortunately, because. yeah. The other realtor <laughs> didn't get us Mark Hoppus. So, again, if you need, uh, well, I guess, a condo or a home or, or some c- commercial real estate uh, in <laughs> Fort Lauderdale, Pensacola. Pensacola. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, his name's Thomas Lehman. When he first followed us, I thought that it said Thomas Lennon, and I thought it was that guy from the state who, uh, who like, writes really bad kids' movies now, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but anyway, so he – I don't understand. Like, thinking of why Mark would reply to him and no one else, like, I just don't really get why Mark – I'm not trying to be mean. Like, he looks like a really nice guy, but he's just so, like – is it, does Mark just respect a man in a suit jacket? I think that's it. He just looks like someone uh, who deserves an answer. Uh, <laughs> Thomas Lehman, again, he will close a deal for you. Uh, <laughs> he literally will. So Thomas Lehman, I mean, I think people have bugged Mark a lot about the pod before. Yeah. But, but Thomas Lehman actually slipped through the crack perhaps because he just looks so put together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so <laughs> he's doing so the job that he wants, which is uh, Liquid Eighty Two's uh, ambassador to Mark. <laughs> yeah, our Booker. Um, so I'm hoping that Thomas Lehman is working on Thomas too long. But anyway, so Thomas Lehman was like, "Go on Blink One Fifty Five Pod," and then Mark did this reply that I've seen him do before to uh, one of our friend friend of the pod, David Park's podcast, where he his sort of go to stock responses, and it's like almost funny, I guess. I think it's funny. He's like, oh, whenever someone invites me onto a podcast, I have to like drive to Silver Lake at midnight or whatever. <laughs> like that's maybe if that if you live in LA and you know some podcasters who live, you think podcasters live in Silver Lake though? I don't know. I feel like it's it's great LA podcast humor, and maybe that's just we're missing it because there aren't a lot of like great um, Calgary or Toronto podcast jokes to be made. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. <laughs> So anyways, that, so Mark was like, I, just seeing him reply was enough for me to be like, okay, you know what? Because speaking of like mics and stuff, there was that time when Damien Abraham from Fucked Up was on our podcast mm-hmm. and you guys had started the call and I joined before he realized and I just heard Damien talking like so candidly about how much of a punisher I am. Yeah. <laughs> he like, he literally like joined us. He was like, yeah, but just as a huge punisher. And you're like, hey, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like, goddamn. But he's not wrong. <laughs> and particularly in my interactions with Damien, I've been very punishing, partly because of uh, anxiety induced extreme drinking while I was on tour with them. I was so scared that I became a drunk, very punishing, annoying person. But, anyways, I was like, you know what? I am a punisher and I'm not. The fact that Mark has just sort of like gently grazed this reply. Yeah. I'm not letting this go. So I, you know, I figured I'd jump in there with my blue check. Hell yeah. Um, and then for some reason <laughs> he replied to that and he was like, 
come to LA or come to a show and do your podcast there. And I'm like, sure, that's a funny idea, but could you actually imagine us like meeting up with Mark and doing this IRL? No. Also, I, I like the idea of doing the podcast. We can't even look at, at each other at a show, though. We should do like um, a live pod, just like from the back of a Blink show at some point right, from the audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But bill it as like Blink One Fifty Five live, you know, in the right. in the three hundreds of this show. It would be cool to do it in the parking lot, like a heavy metal parking lot sort of thing. If only we had not already done the song Parking Lot. Right. I mean, yeah, because that is the thing. Is we And, and this, this week's episode is also a great bit that we'll get to in a second. Because <laughs> I, I, I feel like I very early on like tried to steer us in the direction of, of like – Sort of bits and like ten, you know <laughs> tent pole programming, which is this sort of uh, whole you know, <laughs> hangover from uh, being on YouTube for so long, and right. uh, and you very quickly um, told me no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I so then Mark was like, "Come to a show or whatever." I'm like, "Well, we live in different. Pla- I don't know. This is kind of boring." But then he the the thing that really like the peak for me of the whole night was when he said. Show me the best episode. I'll listen to it. And, <laughs> and is that real when you panicked and started messaging me? I did. I started messaging you. You weren't around because you're never around when I need you. I'm so sorry. Lately. Yeah. And then, so then I was like texting Nicole and I was messaging Ashley. I was sort of like circling in on like, we need, I basically, I almost turned on find my iPhone, but then I remembered you don't have an iPhone. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, what the sorry. fuck? I need to <laughs> circulate. I need to triangulate where he is like <laughs> yeah. 24. Um, because, yeah, I was, like, fucking freaking out, and I knew that there was a tight window, you is, know? Like, he's going to change his mind. a single episode of this podcast where we have been kind about the person that the podcast is about? <laughs> Hard to the, say. The podcast is about us. Yeah, so sorry, yes. yeah. No, we're not very kind to ourselves either. No. Um, I, yeah, so I panicked, but then sort of, like, in this heightened focus that I had from panicking, I scrolled... And also, like, I don't even know where to find our episodes. So I always go to the YouTube page, and for some reason, the my name, my pet Sally episode, always auto plays like so loud. <laughs> like <laughs> this is the, everything about this is a disaster. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. There's not like an easy way where you're like, hey, check out this link on Stitcher. Like, I, no one wants to go to Stitcher. Yeah, what the fuck is that? Or like, my friend uses Podbean. <laughs> sounds like some sort of well, it just sounds sex like toy or something. Well, it sounds like you've said it's like clit clit. Like, I just feel like it's. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, pod bean. I don't want to look that up on Urban Dictionary. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, So then, yeah, I kind of panicked, and then I was like, oh, yeah, shit, he's friends with uh, Colleen Green. I'll play that one, because I remember everyone complained that we were too earnest on the pathetic episode, so I was like, perfect. Yeah, that's the one. too earnest, it means that we're not dunking on him the whole time. Um, And so I sent him that one, and then, thank God, he was like, I'm not going to listen to a fucking three hour podcast, <laughs> which is perfect. Like that was like, you actually expect me to listen to, you know, three hours. And it's like, this is the Blake 155 experience is you expect me to endure this. Yeah. You psychopaths. Yeah. Yeah. So then, I mean, then he sort of like got in the DMS. I posted a little screenshot of one of the DMS on Patreon. Cause it's very funny. Um, unintentionally funny. And then, yeah, he was kind of just like freaked out cause he didn't, he doesn't have Skype. Um, and he didn't want to like give me his number for some reason. <laughs> I don't I can't know what vibe why. I was giving him uh, in that sense. And sorry, but I want to before you get to so so you're in the DMs now, and you're clearly talking about a way you could potentially communicate. And so I do want to sort of fill this in with my version of it because because right. at this point I'm aware of what's happening. And so I was out for dinner uh, with Ashley, and then with a couple of like old coworkers of ours. But it was like you know the former like CEO of the company we work for and like legal counsel. Like it was like the exec team of this <laughs> of this company and I, so I had my phone like off or just like, didn't have do you like did you have to go out with them or was it just like is that like the kind of people you like to hang out with those are just like those are my peers <laughs> uh, so <laughs> but I, I do think it's sort of important context so so we're out with them and uh, I have my phone not like just on silent in my pocket and I'm not looking at it and then at some point Ashley uh, gets up uh, and comes back and is like, Sam, you you have to talk to Josiah. Like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> and it was sort of one of those things where I was like, I hope everything's okay. Like, it didn't. It wasn't like a dude. You, you'll never guess what's what's happening. It was just like, I, I don't know what's up, but like, you 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 need to uh, get this with Josiah. 
<laughs> things were not okay at things all. Were, no, because I was <laughs> trying okay. to think of an episode. What the fuck am I supposed to say? Who? Kn- I don't remember any of these episodes. He, he could probably play one and we'd be like, I joined ISIS because I don't like California or something. It's like, yeah. <laughs> that's it's a, like very it's, likely. It's like a very, and even in the pathetic episode, I'm sure it's like, this is the best. This is life affirming. This like changed who I am and set me on a path. And then they ruined it all by being pieces of shit and writing bottom yeah. of the ocean. Like this we're is, incapable of just being actually sincere and, and not sort of offering tremendous caveats for our genuine. Opinions. I think, no, I mean, that's a whole thing. I think those caveats are what makes the sincerity more sincere, Listen, I, but it's just, no one's ready for it ever. Yeah, they don't want to hear the, the full truth is that you're a shitty, bad person who did one thing good once, <laughs> and I'm proud of that thing that you did. Yeah, and most but you of us never do one good thing, so that's <laughs> yeah, exactly. pretty sick, actually. So I, I pull out my phone, and I have – you've texted me, which you never do, and it's literally like, is this your number? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't – I don't know. I mean, also, it's green text. I'm like, you're going to make me talk to someone with green text? Good <laughs> I know, Lord. I'm sorry. Yeah, and then there's <laughs> – you've, you've messaged me on, uh, obviously, like, just where are you, what the fuck is happening on, like – like Hangouts and Messenger, then uh, I, in another thread, uh, I'm now being <laughs> messaged by friends of the pod, uh, Justin and Nicole, who you speak with pretty regularly, and it's like full, you know, siren emoji, <laughs> Sam, where are you? You need to talk to Josiah. And that's the message that Ashley saw, was Nicole asking her where <laughs> I was, and I, that I needed to talk to Josiah. And so I got up and then started messaging you, and you were like, I don't know, I, I'm wearing the DMs now, I don't know what's happening. I was like, oh, this is crazy. And then I kind of got back to the table, and everyone was like, what was that about? And I was like, <clears throat> ah, here's another band, uh, Blink-182. <laughs> so like, we literally Did just been know? talking about, yes, yeah, they had heard of the band. We had just what been did talking they think of Sigmark? <laughs> they thought he was sick. They, uh, they agreed <laughs> that uh, things have gone downhill. They have the same opinions we have, which is that... Uh, you Typical know, yes men. I know. To find a moment in their lives, ultimately maybe lost them, but they sort of come back, um, you know, uh, <laughs> now as more mature adults. But it was like following a conversation about someone's like, you know, real estate interests in the city to be like, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's like every, every uh, episode is like uh, three hours and it's about um, <laughs> songs about fucking dogs and stuff. It's pretty, pretty sick. And, uh, and, and, and then I sort of disappeared back into sort of this evening while the rest of your night unfolded. Right, yeah. So then he, like, he asked for my number um, rather than because he didn't want to do Skype. And so I gave it to him. And then just like five minutes later, I got this message or I got a phone call from a private number. And I was like, uh, hello, is this Mark? And he's like, I think he said, hi, my name is Mark, actually. Damn. And I was like, well, those 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 classic words I've heard so many times. And then <laughs> just like kind of no laugh or anything. But um, yeah, it was mostly I was nervous that he was going to like listen to the wrong episode and not get the whole context of the whole thing. Um, and then I was nervous that I was going to fuck up the interview, but I don't think I really fucked it up too bad. No, you fucking nailed it, dude. So you sent it to me. So you did the interview, and it was like all of this tension, and then it was just like, got it. And I was like, wait, it happened? And you're like, yeah, it was good. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> he called me, and I was, and he was like, I was like, yeah, I could Skype your number. And he's like, well, I just have a home phone. And I'm like, well, then why don't we just do it right now? And he's like, okay. So I hit record because I'm like, I'm not letting him get – like, no, he's if not you escaping. That a day, if it was like, oh, let's talk tomorrow, or we'll like – it's like it would never happen. He will never because do also this there's podcast. one there's one uh, fish that keeps getting away that was also almost on that episode and mm-hmm. continually keeps but it's like these we need to trap these people uh, yeah it's true we need to because there's <laughs> if there's if there's one thing that people seem to love to fucking do it's say I would love to come on your podcast and then never speak to you ever again <laughs> it's happened to me like ten times like just say no say this is a bad idea instead of like man I have some great anecdotes actually I'd love to come on your show and then just like completely disappear I really respect everyone who says I'm I'm pretty busy and you're like yes that's fine that's all you gotta say <laughs> yeah that's yeah. it. Like, you and I understand each other, I promise you. (laughs) So I left, uh, like, we were out, you know, like, not super late, but it was, like, maybe 11, like, midnight here, and I just, like, could not wait to hear about this, and so I called you on speakerphone so Ashley and I could, like, both get the update at the same time while, like, walking home through Toronto, so we're, like, trying to, like, take side streets and stuff, and, like, eventually we, like, passed, like, a, a, a sort of 
you know, sketchy corner where there's like, it's almost like breaking a glass, like as it was happening. It was just like, there was a lot of shit <laughs> happening around us. Like, it was a very like late night in the big city vibe. And like <laughs> you and Sarah were telling us all about like how the call went and stuff. Uh, it was like a singularly sort of, uh, I don't know. It was it was it was a really great experience to just be on the other side of while you dealt with the actual work and the anxiety, which I suppose is uh, a proper metaphor for the entire project. <laughs> right, exactly. But um, yeah. So then, for for the other weird thing is that this week we've asked another like large group of people that we've been trying to get on the pod for a while who've who've uh, agreed to do it, and then they've all just flaked this week. And so as a result, we are remaining lonesome. (laughs) I was going to say that because we've sort of peaked, that now the podcast is about the epitaph band Left Alone. (laughs) But right, I didn't. I wasn't aware of that band actually until today. But I've, we're going to listen to them a little bit. Great, I, I remember <laughs> them because uh, I feel like when I was like doing warp tour stuff back in the day for Exclaim, they were sort of like along with, I guess the Casualties, kind of like the one of the like token street punk bands that would that would be on the tour for like the the Mohawk punks, right. But uh, not a great band, as I recall. I didn't listen to it. But they're kind of ska, too, right? Are, a I little bit? Again, I didn't listen to it. I just... Uh, I think they're like the definitive sort of like Hellcat kind of band, where you're like, there's a lot of things I want to make fun of, but I'm definitely going to get stabbed if I do. <laughs> That's like fully the Hellcat <laughs> experience, right? Yeah, there's like so many funny things happening right now that I just got to keep to myself. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. I love my guts and I want them to stay inside of me. So the song uh, Remain by, by Your Lonesome by the band Blink-182. I was thinking this also, I had another one, but it's really some dumb wordplay. Oh, yeah, um, go for it. So for that interview, um, I was left alone. But I think the podcast is more right together. <laughs> Just a real earnest wordplay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you, got, you got left versus right. And then I was thinking of making it about like politics too. But, oh, you, know, that's you should. <laughs> that, that would be better. <laughs> Do like twenty minutes, and then just uh, uh, try to shift into like an entire new sort of vamp, all about like, hey, I gotta hear both sides, like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's like, no, just the left alone. Oh, okay, that's good. So this song. So we can pick which one is the best, and then, or we can let the audience decide. Yeah. Because you know how like fans are the most important people on earth now. And they just like vote for whatever, and people are like, "Oh, we should li- we should remake Game of Thrones." Oh yeah, we should redesign Sonic. <laughs> yeah, it is like that is something I respect about Mark. Actually, is that he's not he doesn't seem like he's fully taking the bait of like he like when I talked to him about the new song, he I kind of got a vibe of like "fuck you guys." The song's good. No, and I agree. I. I actually like legitimately thought it was uh, an interesting interview because you kind of had a sense, uh, a, a genuine sense of where he was coming from on it. Like he still is obviously like a sort of on message media trained person who has been famous probably longer than they weren't famous at this point. And, and you know, that, that just like breeds an inherent sort of sense of, uh, you just, you know how to talk about yourself in a kind of guarded way, but you did sort of uh, feel a, a, like some earnest pushback from him in terms of like, this to me is a classic Blink song, and this is what we want to be doing, and and I, I really appreciate that. Especially had, we had already recorded this sort of glowing, um, you know, four hour opus about the song, and to to sort of understand that that the motivation from their end was sort of similar to what we were interpreting, which was like this is what they're listening to, and they want to be able to you know use. I don't, I'm just regurgitating that episode. The song <laughs> "Left Alone" by the band Blink One Eighty Two. <laughs> Let's talk about it. How do you like uh-huh. it, Josiah? What's your what's your um Well, okay, also I said it was Mark season, but I'm the more I've read about it, it's actually more seems to be more of a Matt Skiba song, actually. It's funny. It's one of the few ones that's definitely a more of a Matt Skiba song. But I fucking love this song. This song's good as hell. It really is. This, 
everything about it is fantastic. And also, everyone agrees with this on Reddit. And everyone just... I mean... I don't know. There's probably someone who's like, I don't like this song, but fuck you. Yeah. If you're sitting there saying, I don't like this song, go fuck yourself. That, yeah. <laughs> Turn off this podcast, fill your pockets with stones, and walk into a lake. <laughs> Just. Oh, <wow. laughs> that does, I mean, as long as it's not too deep of a lake, because we don't need to hurt yourself. No, but no, no. I'm just saying, like, you get know. Get wet. It might be kind of fun. Like, if you just, like, you know, so you, you kind of, like, submerged, uh, but you were weighted down. That might be an interesting, just, like, relaxing that, sensation. And maybe their jeans would become stonewashed if they did that. <laughs> that that's actually the original stonewashing. <laughs> People who ineffectively tried to um, die by suicide. Uh, <laughs> but like in a river that wasn't deep enough. And it was like, wait, my jeans look sick now. <gasps> I have something to live for. <laughs> um, something I was going to say right off the bat was that everyone does say that this song is criminally unappreciated. And all this stuff. And they keep using this phrase. And I keep thinking like... We should decriminalize not appreciating <laughs> things. It's, <laughs> it's true, right? Because thinking high things, time. not appreciating things, is good. So I think uh, don't let's stop. Let's let's end the stigma. <laughs> that should become our our uh, our real mission uh, as a, as a podcast as a as an entity. You know, like like having like skateboarding is not a crime kind of stickers. Like that should be right. Like, we've sort of already resolved. Um, you know. Um, Dude Ranch being male ejaculate, you fucking win, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> it's like, it's too weird to say. No, I just you feel like when it. you're having your you first it. conversation ever with someone, you can't say the word cum. Although that was the second time I talked to him, but. True. I, I um, think, uh, yeah, cum's definitely like a third date. Um, <laughs> yeah, topic. yeah, next time I'll be fine. Uh, dude, if, if, you know, we end up doing the pod at a show, uh, again, from the back. <laughs> I'll yell the word come, I don't mind. <laughs> we'll just scream it from the rooftops. <laughs> the first time I interviewed Mark was for Exclaim when California was coming out, and um, it was like, it seems like a lot of shit, like I'll go for many months without doing any huge interviews and then a whole bunch of shit will happen at once and a whole bunch of shit will come out at once. Yeah. And that day I had, I rode my bike to the downtown theater for a press screening of that movie, Swiss army man. Um, Does that and good? then like, I think I like it, but people think it's too twee. It's like really twee, but it's also about like boners and stuff. So I think it's good. That's cool. Um, but yeah, so I, and then I like sped home because there was only, I was almost late for my interview with Mark, so I was like all out of breath, and I just watched this weird like twee movie about boners and <laughs> farting and stuff, and it was like kind of it made sense in my mind, but I was just like so not on the ball. And also back then I hadn't spent this much time thinking about Blink One Eighty Two. I mean I'd spent a lot of time thinking about them, but yeah, but not in a professional context. I'm glad that I've I've had a second chance. Um, and I'm hoping he'll come back. I mean, there is an unanswered DM to him now since then. Oh, so we'll okay. <laughs> yeah. He does still follow, so, but he hasn't unfollowed the pod yet? He hasn't unfollowed yet. And I was like, there was like a three-hour period where I was like, I should probably stop retweeting everything and like doing, <laughs> making our Twitter so psycho. <laughs> and Mark follows us. And then I sort of quickly abandoned that idea. Yeah, you can't, like, look at Mark. We love that you're part of the nation now, but we can't change ourselves for you. Um, yeah, exactly. But just know that that's part of our way of showing you respect. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, so you like the song. I love the song, but, I, but you know what's funny is I feel like I undervalued this song. Like when it comes to California, there are certain things that I that I do really like about it. We've been through this song, you know, with the San Diego episode. Uh, you know, Bored to Death is a song that we, I think we both thought was like promising and, and, and interesting. And this is one of those ones where when you suggested it, because we wanted to, I think, do this Mark song, like a Mark song to sort of just um, bathe in our um, infatuation with this man. But we quickly realized <laughs> that we're running out of kind of classics. We've done most of Dude Ranch. Like we're, we're, we're looking down the barrel of a lot of California Deluxe <laughs> songs somehow still. And so you suggested this one, and I was like, oh, right, which one is that? Because I always mix it up with the American Steel song, Finally Alone. And so I was like, humming it in my head, I was like, no, that's American Steel. And then when I put it on, I was like, all right, this song fucking rules, but I, I don't think about it, and, I don't, and I, hopefully I will more at the end of, I just certainly have to think about it now. Well, this was our, like, this was, okay, first of all, I'm getting worried now because the cover section is going to be a real, <laughs> I think it's going to be a miracle if I still like the song after the cover section. Uh, okay. Um, I thought you but, were worried about our time crunch. 
No, oh, well, I mean, I am a little worried about that too, but um. <laughs> the time crunch, by the way, is an hour and fifty-five minutes, which we discussed before we started. Hey, yeah. For people at home keeping track. Well, yeah, but you didn't even have a mic prepared, so admittedly, I, mean. I, <laughs> I I didn't make things easier with the crunch. Uh, what was I going to say? I guess I got to oh, leave well, it well, the bit with me fucking up the mic now, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, there's great shit in there. <laughs> it's true. Okay. So while you were getting your mic, I pretended that Chewbacca died. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to listen back. I can't wait for Mark to hear this one and be like, wow, what a great show. Yeah, I love I'm this. so glad I'm part of this now. <laughs> yeah, you're in this universe, bro. Okay, so I felt like you were I, trying to say something my, about yeah, this song. So I was going to say, when I first listened to California all the way through, this was my f- early favorite song on it. You know, it's. It, it, I think um, there's something about coming back to it now, having sort of done this deep dive on Blame It On My Youth, where... I feel like I like this song for some of the same reasons that I like playing on my youth, which is that it sounds melodically like a Blink song, but it also is just like a big, you know, modern rock radio sounding song, which again yeah. feels feels honest. Like it doesn't feel like they're trying to do some like throwback pop punk thing. It's like, look, this is who the fuck we are now. We play big festivals and, you know, our peers are these sorts of bands and this is kind of where we're at creatively. And so yeah, both it feels both of honest. the songs, both of the songs sound like the kind of song that you'd play in your car while you're cruising around LA, where like you want it to be all big and loud. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You have like some fancy dashboard display that like scrolls all the liner notes across while you do it. You know, like I'm still my car's so shitty that I have to burn CDRs to to listen to digital music in my car. Um, but they this is this is like fancy car music, whereas I don't think like the fake pop punk songs are right. This is like how you burned a CDR of the Succession uh, theme just so <laughs> yeah, you could always exactly. be listening to the Succession theme. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cool when it's raining and I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> driving around listening to the Succession theme song. I will say this about so the Succession cool. theme: by the end of that season, they were playing it a lot. Like it, <laughs> they're just like it's just I would like say kind of <laughs> constant. Like it felt like that the, theme song is definitely its own character for in sure. The show. But it just sort of became like the you know SNL um, uh, image and heap uh, bit. You know, <laughs> yeah. Just anytime anything like every every two seconds it was like here comes a helicopter in the succession theme. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I think I, I think the. The uh, like songs like Cynical, while they're still good, they sound more like they're trying to write a jammed cassette player mm-hmm. in a in a Hyundai sort of pop punk song. Whereas this song is like this sounds like the cars that you guys are driving. Yeah. And I think that's really what I want to hear from an automotive perspective. It feels uh, <laughs> earned and authentic. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it sounds so um, good with the scrolling <laughs> dashboard. You know, that's it's funny. Every time someone from the nation tweets like listening to the pod while I, you know, especially Bill Billingsley always like, yeah. you know, taking photos while driving. It's like that man's got a nice dashboard. Like I bet this song sounds amazing in Bill Billingsley's car. I, I mean, I know. and like, Travis's Cadillac, fuck? which is also it, Bill Billingsley's cra- car. <laughs> right. Like, how are you, how is people, how are you owning a car that has, like, a fucking, like, you could probably play video games on your dashboard. That's insane. It's so sick. It's not fair. Yeah. I have to just play video games on my phone while I'm driving like a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Josh O'Kane's going to be so mad about that. <laughs> um, so, I guess, I mean, ultimately, the, I'll, I'll just read what Feldy said to Fuse. This is, like, back to we a nice format it. that we know. We yeah. don't have to. <laughs> um, here's what Feldy said. That was the second song we did together. Matt Skiba really put up his hand and said, let me take this one. I came up with this epic chorus idea and chorus melody. Again, it was just one of those moments where we were really trying to figure out what Blink's legacy is. To me, this really a Matt Skiba driven song. You can really hear when Matt is singing up there in that high register, just scratching to get the note, how cool it sounds, how desperate. To me, it sounds like Matt's shining moment on the record. Because it is so similar to Bored to Death structurally, we were concerned if it was too similar to Bored to Death. But in the end, (laughs) with Matt's vocal performance, we thought, this has to go on the record. We needed to remind everyone how much of a unique singer Matt is. I feel like just when you type out what an aging pop punk guy has said out loud, that you just cannot read it without (laughs) losing brain cells in the process. I feel like I just did whippets while I was reading that. (laughs) 
<laughs> Thank you he's for, a, for uh, you know, sacrificing yourself for the Padres. I. <laughs> he's like saying, you know, this is really all about Blink's legacy because it's just Matt Skiba being Matt Skiba. Like, what? <laughs> it's confusing. But it is, I had the same thought when I went back and I listened to the song today again. I was like, this song rocks, but this doesn't necessarily fit the criteria that we initially laid out for ourselves, which was a cool Mark song. <laughs> like it definitely is is a is a Skiba song. I think that's why I like it too because you know we've uh, we've fawned collectively over his vocals so much on this podcast. And <laughs> I do. Th- I think he sounds really good on this. He sounds song too. fucking amazing, and that's the great thing about like like Matt Skiba has this like crazy range, which I there, I don't think I've talked about this before. Um, you know, and and this song has that like sort of uh, really unique upper part of his register, which he still seems to have like a lot of control in. And it's just like it is, yeah, totally a, a shining moment for him, and and as a result, a definitive moment for the band Blink One Eighty Two that he has <laughs> always been a part of. Well, I thought I'll talk about why I like Mark on it in a second. But the other funny thing to me is that they thought it was too similar to Bored to Death, and it almost didn't make the album because of it. Like it's literally the only difference is that it's just kind of half half time compared to pop punk, but. This could have easily been a huge radio single, and no one would have been like, oh, it's just Bored to Death again. I also don't think it sounds anything like Bored to Death, and now that it's been mentioned by Feldy, I can I can see it, you know, structurally, and, like, even just, like, the way the drum beat in the verses is that, that sort of, like, yeah, not a punk beat. But, I mean, look, I don't know anything about keys or whatever, but it feels like Bored to Death is minor, and this is major... Yeah, I think that's definitely uh, incorrect, but... <laughs> Look, at it. they use uh, different sounds well, the verses, and words. The verses, I think the verses of Bored to Death are minor. Right, that's what I'm saying. And this one just stays, but then it then it switches to major. This one, I think, is just major the whole time. But, yeah, I guess it's just because it's halftime. I don't know. Yeah, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't feel thematically or, like, even, like, melodically really the same. I think it just sort of occupies, I guess, for them, uh, like... A similar space. We're like, okay, we're gonna have the up tempo banger, and we're gonna have the the mid tempo, you know, friggin' stay together for the kids song, uh, and and maybe in that sense, they felt like it just sort of was was too much of that vibe on the record. But right, but then don't say it out loud because I don't want to hear them saying like, oh, so we had a checklist of what the album yeah, should have, yeah, and exactly. this, you know, it's like we already. We didn't want to sink our battleship, so to speak, uh, with all the <laughs> Xing out of various. It's kind of weird. Yeah, they, um, they did the um, you know uh, focus groups and you know what what is a perfect Blink song and uh, you know they they built this sort of structure and made by an. I like, I wish that was. I wish that Mark was like. Yeah, of course, there's an algorithm. <laughs> yeah, like you just know, like the so me? good. Yeah. Guy, like we have, we were talking about this offline earlier today, or talking about this. I was reading something that you had written about it, and um, I just assume everything that I read that you write is like a conversation between us, <laughs> right? Well, I actually don't communicate with other people other than through the podcast or through exclaim.ca. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the extent of things. Hold on, I'm someone like else a, is writing my tweets. I'm getting like an intensely quizzical look from Ashley, and so I like, yeah. He's just painting them? What? Oh. Yeah. Our, hmm. our, okay. Our neighbors are like <laughs> freaks, man. <laughs> They're painting plastic chairs and reselling them? I, I don't know. Is that what I just heard? Or just like getting them ready for summer? Like, you know, the like white plastic kind of lawn chair thing? Yeah. Yeah. I guess it was like a little off, like it's dirty and he's just repainting it. There, there's a lot of... <laughs> Stuff in their backyard. It's weird. Cool. An important interjection. No, no, Ashley, I appreciate it. No, it's very important. Josiah agrees it was important. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I I just think, like, maybe in the trade offs, too, is is that where it feels similar? Like, it just, I don't know. It just seems like a weird thing to, to, uh, yeah, you're right, to kind of like verbalize. It's weird, but here's why I think this is, like, a great Mark song is because the bass line is so fucking totally. sick. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds so good, and I am I feel like I'm going to blow a gasket if I keep reading Reddit because everyone's just like, oh, the start sounds like Angels and Airwaves. It doesn't sound like Blink at all. But, like, again, Mark Hoppus' main influence is The Cure. Yeah. You idiots. It's I mean, ex- that's what it sounds like. <laughs> it, it's extremely the cure. Although I will say, Blink doesn't tend to use like even like, um, like 
that guitar tone that I don't know what you'd call that effect, like whatever the fuck that is. It, that's a very, you know, angels and airwavesy thing. Like that's like the shit that Tom definitely like really got into. Yeah. But I mean, he also did that on cell phone entitled and, uh, on neighborhoods. Yeah. Man, I was thinking of telling Mark that we call it self unentitled too. Like, there's so many. Imagine I just, like, kidnapped him and made him learn all about the pod and the nation. <laughs> I mean, you trying to explain it at the beginning was sort of, he's like, huh? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, no. And then he catches on, which is, like, really, it, it's great. Um, but it, <laughs> for the first 20 seconds of that interview, I was like, I would hate to be Josiah right now <laughs> yeah, exactly. because it just felt like you were like, you know, you get it. And he was like, what? No, what the fuck? You, wait, oh, we have a hundred. You, like okay. you hear his voice echoing in the grand room of his mansion or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Just talking from, <laughs> so but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think this, like, it's a very poppy song that's not trying to be dark, but it still has the sort of like elements of neighborhoods and self unentitled. And like, I think Mark's showing, his influences in a cool way. The baseline is sick and it's creative and the song is great. Well, I think you're, you're totally right. And for some reason I wasn't thinking about the cure when I was listening to it. It just felt like it was like, okay, it's like a, a, you know, blinky, you know, radio rock song, but no, you're right. It's a completely just like a fucking cure song. Yeah. Yeah. And then it goes halftime. And then I fucking love the second half of the chorus when Travis is the sort of like cold play drum beat where it's like do 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 I love that. It's so cool. It's very play. Yeah, and the the drums are great in this song. The drums There's are like, great in this song. He does like some really showy things, but like again in a really cool way. Well he gets to Man. do like kind of some dishwasher stuff where it like but it, but it's not. It doesn't feel like it's the centerpiece. Like it, it sort of fits. It fits in where it's like, okay, this is the part where you're just sort of sitting in this groove, and then he just kind of does the like very flashy Travis shit. But like mostly, he is really holding it down, and I think that makes the like extremely Travis moments kind of just stand out and and work in context better. Yeah, it's so good. Um, I'm gonna play you uh, Matt Skiba talking about the song. With enemy, sick. But I gotta say, when he talks in interviews, he sounds like he like sounds like nicotine to me. Like he's just <laughs> like I don't know how to explain it. He sounds like a talking ashtray. I'm sorry. So doesn't that mean I'm you sorry. should like him based on sort of our our general? Yeah, opinion it's true. Here? Yeah, he's sort of like like Mark is the one who makes me want to smoke, but then Matt is the one who makes me realize that I shouldn't smoke. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> God and the devil. <laughs> he's he's the warning label, so to speak. <laughs> Man, I have the greatest get rich quick idea, but it's like so evil. But you know how in Canada, like cigs have to have those awful labels on them. I haven't bought a pack in a long time. Maybe they maybe it's different now. But you know they'd have like the the pregnant lady with like the demon face or whatever. Or, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it has all these things. And then I was thinking, what if you made. Like humorous cartoon pro smoking stickers that were exactly the same size, and then people can just buy the stickers and slap them over their pack, and then it's <laughs> and then they're like, oh, this is actually cute now. Six, six it's like sticks, a, man. Sticker. Yeah, it's like a little <laughs> sit, stick sticks. <laughs> right? Yeah, there you go, um, man. <laughs> they must have that like shit a, in so other countries too. So, like, I, I'm sure start in Canada. Um, and then well, you need to. I feel like you need to measure the different sizes exactly, of each one. Yeah. But if it was like a let's all go to the lobby style, but it's a sig, <laughs> and he's like smiling and stoked. Yo, I would start smoking. I think, yeah, as long <laughs> maybe I just need to work for a tobacco company. I think that's what <laughs> all of your yeah, all of your genius <laughs> is being wasted on. Um, <laughs> I do have a conspiracy theory that sig companies will like make things famous if it's pro smoking without like not directly. Like I think. I I kind of believe that Mac DeMarco's song Viceroy was like someone made sure that that song became a hit so that <laughs> so that teens would start smoking. I mean, they are <laughs> like on one hand that is insane and not true, but on the other hand those are the most evil and I, I think as a result sort of uh, creative and nefarious ways companies <laughs> that have ever existed. And so if anyone was going to do something like that, it's, it's definitely them. <laughs> okay, here's uh, Sig Matt. Talk- I don't even know if he smokes, to be honest, but here he is talking to enemy. He's so cool. 
Uh, Left Alone, that was another uh, song to me. I mean, you know, I'm such a huge fan of this record, and to me, uh, front to finish, I, I really love every song for different reasons. Left Alone, early on, I thought was a contender for a single. Um, again, so hitty, so immediate and huge, and um, I really dig, uh, like, Travis's drumming on that song especially was just classic uh, Travis Barker. It's like, you know, the whole thing is, I mean, the whole record, there's so many parts where I'm like, oh, the like kids that play drums are going to learn that fill. They're going to have to learn that fill or like, you know, it, that that drum part uh, in that song, too. I'm like that all the drummer kids are going to be, you know, just they're all going to have to learn. It. It's classic. Uh, and then up on top of that is just a really huge, catchy song that I thought this could be the single too. That was, for, in my opinion, it was like that song and Left Alone and Bored to Death. Kind of similar songs, but also when you listen to them next to each other, very different. Dear, he's <laughs> really like communicating. He's hedging so much. And I feel like everyone in Blink-182 has like a resting bitch face, so to speak. I'm sorry, that's the phrase. But I, I stumbled across this um, Huffington Post video from when California came out, now known as HuffPo. I'm not going to play it right now, but I might screen cap it for later because it's like a live live stream that they've uploaded to YouTube. And just like their faces in between ca- in between questions are so severe and serious. And I feel like Mark's sitting beside Matt looking so serious. And that's why Matt has to be like, look, I mean, I love this whole album. Don't get me wrong. I think it's all really good. I, prom- like, please, I promise. Please I promise. Don't fire it. me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm into it. Uh, I'm disappointed to say, uh, I actually, I, I don't know if Matt Skiba smokes. I can only find photos of him uh, smoking the reefer. Oh, shit. So, yeah, maybe uh, you know, maybe he's only 420. I, found a, I don't know. I found a photo of him uh, hanging out with Moby recently, so that's really uh, interesting. Honestly, that is hardly his worst friend. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like that's a guy who was like true. obsessed with like non or whatever for a long time. And uh, like, so funny. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah, don't get me wrong, bad, but like definitely um there are uh, he has he has shittier friends. I don't know if the lyrics to this song are that good. Uh, I had them open, uh, but I also have the lyrics to Left Alone's I Hate Emo open, which I think I like more. Oh wow! Yeah, let's let's play that one. <laughs> um, I mean, l- look at I, maybe we yeah. Let's let's see how uh, how audible the lyrics are because. <laughs> um, also, I, like, so the th- so it just repeats. I hate emo. They look like girls and smell like caca until the third and final verse, which is yes, I do. And if I had a gun, I would shoot you too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I, I want to point out that um, uh, the bio for Left Alone on the Epitaph website refers to this record as a stone cold classic. Uh, that takes aim at corporate radio, suck ass emo bands, and everything in between. Which I'm like, that's tight. That's and it's <laughs> on Epitaph. <laughs> yeah, I guess like does Hellcat exist anymore? Like, I don't, I'm not like a boots and braces man. I mean, I don't think any of those people. I think Hellcat is for people who uh, own rockabilly stores in small California towns right. exclusively. Yeah. <laughs> I just like the idea of like these are the two things that you can criticize as a punk band: corporate radio and suck ass emo bands. But Left Alone dares to criticize all of the things between those two <laughs> poles. Well, here's another one of their songs called "Odio Eldia," which like, do they just do every genre? <laughs> yeah, Hellcat baby. But we can honestly, I'm already worried about getting stabbed. <laughs> It kind of sounds good, that one. <laughs> sounds less Social D. <laughs> you think that I Ate Emo sounded like Social D? Yeah, what I imagine it to. It sounds <laughs> like people who, ha- who like, um, buy those BMXs that look like a hot rod motorbikes. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's yeah. It's, like, not a motorbike, but it's, like, a 
Like, people who like wacky racing by Hanna-Barbera, but, like, in a very stone-cold, serious kind of way. I, I recently saw, I want to say a fleet, like, three or four kind of old Queen West punks with those, like, yeah, low-rider, big-wheel bikes in their, like, jean jackets and shit biking down Queen Street. And I honestly was uh, so sad. <laughs> I just, like, it was, it, it wasn't funny to me. <laughs> like the way that the rollerblade resurgence. Are, are you getting rollerblades in Calgary, by the way? Uh, I mean, probably. There's a lot of corny people all over the fucking place no, all but the these time. Are, I mean, these are like corn dogs, obviously, but the, but these are. It's part of the whole like '90s resurgence, aesthetic resurgence uh. has now like included, I guess, '90s activities, and so these are like quote unquote, you know, hip people blading. Interesting. Oh, that sounds okay. I can get behind that. <laughs> okay, so you're down with the blade research. As long as they're hip, then I'm into they it. They are very um, hip. It's better than better than people who are riding those bird scooters. Like when I was in America, I was like, there were so many people I wanted to hit with our rental car. <laughs> um, <laughs> Everybody scoots it's in all, America. It's all like Sarah pointed this out too. Is that you never see a woman on one because I think that they're conditioned. To like not look like a fucking dumbass. <laughs> like they're more worried about like not looking like, and it's always like some dumbass forty-year-old man who's like trying to hide his grin as he's like scooting down the road. Well, look, we <laughs> in a suit. I mean, this is uh, this is uh, I guess maybe now amongst my most sexist opinions, but like I've joked about this, where the only people that seem to expressly say no to this podcast are women when we ask them. <laughs> right, like it's true. They, uh, <laughs> like, me, again, I mean, it's part of a uh, I think a systemic uh, you know podcast issue maybe, um, but it's the same on scooters, scooters and pods, baby. Yeah, they're just like. No thanks. No, I don't want to look like a dumbass. I don't want to do something that is obviously foolish and will make me look foolish as a result. And you're like, yes, I really, I, I, I really I was that respect smart. that. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be amazing? But the lyrics to this song are, I, I, I don't think about them. I guess like it just feels like I, it's it, even like re-listening to it a couple times today. Just sort of letting it wash over me. I, I'm not retaining a lot from it. I don't know that they're bad. Um, there's just nothing. No, that they're not really bad. Jumps out to me. I think I find "Here's to the Sunrise" to be a really gross lyric, and it's right off the top. So the fact that the song survives someone singing "Here's to the Sunrise" and I don't turn it off is a sign of how good of a song it is. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a, a huge victory. Like, there's no song where you could say, here's to the sunrise. That's so bad. <laughs> I also, like, wish, I almost wish we could do another episode about the song California just to dunk on it more. <laughs> yeah, well, that'll be, like, <laughs> when we finish, you know, the hun- 168 songs or whatever that we end up. All the sex numbers. Yeah, I know. It's going to be great. And and then we have to loop around and just sort of do it all again. Uh, we'll we'll start maybe with California. So like, start <laughs> writing out your hilarious quips. Now. Actually, well, sincerely though, I do think one day we're going to do a exclusive where we do dump weed again because the the format was not. There's so much that we missed. It's crazy. I'm sure. I also like. I mean, I edited so much out back then. <laughs> yeah. Like I edited out the tangents. That's what I did. Awful. Also the. The I don't love the pre-chorus lyrics. Can you remember the last time we woke up sober? Mm. I feel like that's kind of like I'm pretty sure they definitely can because it's probably almost every day, except for maybe Sigmat. <laughs> yeah, the Sigmat's always waking up cool. <laughs> I, you know, the one thing about this is like it it feels kind of um, more of a like general, I guess like relationship like life malaise song in a way that also feels authentic to where the band is at. Like I'm reading the chorus right now. I'm like, I don't know exactly what the song is about. And I actually appreciate that. Like, it's not like, okay, we're going to write a song about how sick it is to work all week and then drink beers on the weekend. It's like, (laughs) you don't know what that's like. You have no idea. Someone explain, someone had to explain that to you. (laughs) You hate Kings of the weekend almost as much as you hate uh, going away (laughs) to college, which Mark also hates. <laughs> yeah, he had, Mark hates it too. I love that he was like, "It's too staccato." Deck, 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 deck. That was a, that was very funny. Um, that was good. So that's why. I just, hate it. I hate since it. we don't have a guest this week, we should just paste that interview again at the end. <laughs> totally. <yeah. laughs> we'll just put it in every episode where we don't have a guest. The worst thing is uh, that I'm going to say about being left alone with no guest is that I, uh, as you know, 
But it's you know how like on Facebook you have that secret inbox. What? Do you know about that? Like I don't message know about requests, my, I guess it's called. Oh, I do know about but, that. Yeah, because that's where that's where people tell me um, this exists. Episodes I should make. Oh yeah, yeah. Or that's where I get like, like I think the guy from the Deers sent me a press release <laughs> right. on there once. They, and that's I was like, where Can you, you get requests for premieres. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, now I'm on the other side of that because I was trying to get this one guy as a guest this week. But we're not really connected, and he won't reply to my friend request. So therefore, he—he, he, I don't think he knows about the secret inbox. I didn't. Yeah, I, think it's I didn't know work. about the secret inbox for a long time. When I finally found it, there was like a few things in there where I was like, I wish these messages weren't secrets. Yeah, me too. And then some of them, I was like, oh, that's a death threat. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a death threat, like an online death threat? Well, uh, yeah, like, like pretty. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. For like what? Um, for like Avengers reviews. No, like for when I did this article about how Calgary rap is all terrible. Oh yeah, and a yeah. bunch of people were like wanted to kill me for saying that because I guess we're actually like a really. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know why you would defend. Everyone like, all knows the premises to be mad at. <laughs> Calgary is uh, you know a, an epicenter of exciting <laughs> hip hop culture. Yeah, there's people who still just want to piss on my grave over writing writing some jokes about Calgary rap. I mean, how could you time. shit on Calgary rap when there's so many famous rappers from Calgary? Um, yeah, like uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, the tape skipped while we were talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was, the yeah, the well. <laughs> list was lost. Sorry, I, I anyways, unplugged my so mic I, again. <laughs> I'm in the message request folder of a man whose birth name is Mark Hoppus. So we, right. I was trying to get it featuring Mark Hoppus again this week, but he won't reply. Yeah, I, guy, I was talking so. to a few, um, a, a few friends about it. They're like, what are you, how are you going to follow up the Mark Hoppus thing? I was like, well, Josiah's trying to get another Mark Hoppus. <laughs> <laughs> Which like only would have been funny if it was in this episode, so I guess we can talk about it now. But he may, he may show up eventually. Yeah, what if he just replies right now and then I'm like, oh, no. Sam... I gotta go. I see, if, if, honestly, <laughs> if uh, if Mark Hoppus, the troop, responds to you, mm-hmm. yeah, he's also a troop. And isn't that amazing? He is the son of Mark Hoppus. <laughs> yeah, we know too much about him. We know him. so much about this guy. <laughs> His father recently passed away. Rest in peace, yeah. um, Mark Hoppus Senior. Yeah, so our, um, the, our condolences. Because there is a lot of people with the Facebook name Mark Hoppus, but this is a real Mark Hoppus. I, I checked. Oh, so the other ones were all, like, using that as their stunt name? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if we so. could just get, a like, a, a, a person also named Scott Rayner and just be like, oh, two, two in a row would be amazing. Like, <laughs> Scott Rayner, the, the teacher. <laughs> that, I He's mean, got the spicy be- mark on Ooh. ratemyprofessor.com. <laughs> we gotta be able to get the real Scott right now. <laughs> I don't know. Of all the things. <laughs> He's definitely seen our messages, I think. Um, but, you know, look, we got a lot of episodes to go, and now we've got Mark Juice, you know, sprayed all over the pod. Mark Juice. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so something I want to say about the term left alone is that it, they also say it in the song Pathetic. Oh, so the song is like a spiritual sequel. I guess uh, there is also the trade-off vocals on here. Yeah. You know? Okay, um, that's cool. That's kind of a, a little tidbit for all the new normies who are listening who made it this <laughs> far. Jesus, yeah. The kind of shit you can hear on here, you fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine listening to a Blink One Eighty Two podcast, you idiot. Yeah. What is? What are you doing with your life? <laughs> it's basic. Imagine trying to explain this to someone. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. Know. Uh, yeah, and then, so we've already listened to the band Left Alone, I wrote that down. Yeah, you got that. You know what's amazing <laughs> is how many people also in real life congratulated me on the Mark Hoppus thing. Like, I had, <laughs> I know. like, messages from people that I didn't know listen to the pod, like, very, just like, you get, ah, oh, it's so great. It was like, what the fuck? This is amazing. It's like, I also think it's, like, definitely not, like, I mean, I think it, it was really good and fun, but there's, like, way funnier things that have happened that I find more entertaining. <laughs> well, I think like, to me, that's, so, like, it's so expected. You said it on, on uh, I think, on Twitter, but really, like, the maybe the best guess so far was the other Sam Sutherland. <laughs> right, exactly. Because he ended up being so great, too. I know, or even like having Leo Dio on and being so upset and <laughs> profoundly offended by him. That's at least more exciting. Yeah, Leo Dio. In a way. What would you say to your haters if they're listening or even interviewing you right now? I like think <laughs> it's become a real stone cold Josiah classic. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Mark um, Hoppus is. Who even cares? We've. 
dedicated too much time. <laughs> uh, the real so highlight good. of that episode was the covers. Anyway. I want Mark and Tom to start a podcast where they listen to Junior Battles and Prenup now. <laughs> that would be so sick. <laughs> or if they listen to Blink-155. Oh, yeah, that'd be good, too. In fact, that is really obviously our legacy, no matter what else we try to sincerely do yeah, with our lives. it does lives. not this matter how much time we've put into those respective sort of earnest creative pursuits. Like, sorry, this is <laughs> it's it. pointless. This is it now. Because we said cummies on the microphone, and then everyone's <laughs> like, oh, my God. Maybe. These two guys, these two guys said cummies? <laughs> Maybe our mistake was, like, not singing enough about cum. <laughs> right. I feel like you could work come into a prenup song easier than I could have ever I don't could know. ever work prenup into a junior about or oh fuck you know what I'm saying pre cum um, <laughs> that's gonna be innovative. I do like, are there I, any songs I, about pre cum oh my god I feel like maybe. there are a lot of songs about like coming at least songs about pre cum <laughs> that should be your next band. <laughs> you did. Oh, lyrics.com songs that contain the term pre cum. Uh, we've got Lil Boozy. Okay. Of course. Although I don't see. It's not showing the, the lyric where it says that. I feel like oh, it's. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Can't you. Okay, yeah, that's. You know what to read. Yeah, there's a lot of rap songs. But I about feel like it's it. easier oh, well. to work interesting phrases into, into hip hop. Whereas, like, pop punk, it's like you have to sing about your, your brothers and your sisters and the road. And it's hard to. Like, <laughs> that's your thing. But there, isn't there. I mean, there's got to be a lot of pre cum in the van after a while, <laughs> yeah, right? The van is just sticky with pre cum. <laughs> so that's going to be part of, like, a, the next, uh, you know, the sophomore album from every pop punk band that's like, oh, being away from home on the road, <laughs> sticky with pre cum. Like, that's going to be worked into the trope of the sophomore album. I would pop like it if you, started, if you started using that sort of Chad Kroger vi- voice. That'd be cool, too. <laughs> gonna, yeah, that's. Uh, look out. No, no, new junior See, like, what material. if we got Chad Kroger on the pod? That would be so much cooler. <laughs> it's true, yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I, lo- I agree with what you said about how the lyrics, you can't really tell what they're about. Like, it feels kind of like a generic pop song in a good way. It totally. In the sense yeah. that it's just like, like, someone could take, some kid could, in their grade eight poetry class, could analyze these lyrics and like try to figure out what they mean and it would be so terrible what they wrote but they'd probably get like a B plus or something on their thing. It would absolutely yeah. be worth a B plus. And in that sense it's it's reminiscent of like, you know, the 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 bigger stadium rock bands that it feels like they're kind of like referencing a little. Like Coldplay songs, you know, feel like they could be about anything, you know? Yeah. And also the OOOs are good in here. Yeah, totally. These are earned OOOs. Yeah, the song's good. But anyway, so it's, <laughs> it is such a generic phrase that me Googling Blink-182 Left Alone took me to this weird-ass site is called this? Whisper. Is this? Oh, is dude. Is this like a confession site? Did you never get this. into any of these things? There was Whisper and there was Yik Yak, and they were basically the same app, essentially. It's like a confession thing, is that right? Yeah, but like mostly they were used for children to bully each other. Because right. they are, uh, again, they, they were very similar. There was that guy... Who was the main driver of Gawker traffic? Remember, like, uh, I want to say his name was Nazneen, but it's not that. That was the name of a uh, girl that I went to high school with. But, like, <laughs> it's a name like that. And, uh, you know, he did sort of the unsexy Gawker stuff. Like, he wasn't one of the, like, cool ones, but he did all the, like, mega viral stuff. He was responsible for, like, all their traffic. And then he got hired to go work. I think he worked at Secret. And the idea was just to try to figure out how to sort of, um, actually have some of that, like how to get the apps to sort of break out in, in a way because they were just exclusively being used by teens and obviously didn't work out. Um, Nazanin Zimmerman? Is that his fucking name? Anyway, that, no one cares. <laughs> and so they were, yeah. uh, these apps are, um, like, they're, they're uh, based on l- location tags, right? So you would whisper something in Toronto or at, you know, your high school or your middle school or the bar you're at or whatever. Um, and they could, you know, just run from, you know, being like, um, I'm sad and my friends never return my calls. And it's just like the kind of cathartic post-secret thing of being able to just send out a missive into the world and your true feelings anonymously. But they were uh, uh, increasingly used, like, really to, to, like, be horrible to other kids to the point where both apps, I think, eventually had to ban 
like they had to sort of lock <laughs> down anything that was geo targeted to or like tagged location wise for a school, like because it was becoming this epidemic of like you know anonymously saying like oh you know Josiah had a um, uh, Slurpee and he got long johns from it, you know. Right. <laughs> I feel like every high school had a kid that there was a rumor that he jacked off with a vacuum and then everyone called him Hoover. <laughs> yeah, that's like one of the classics for sure. My <laughs> my my favorite was uh, um, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Joe Lasco. The rumor was that he, he was goth and that he slept in a coffin that his uncle had made for him. And <laughs> yeah, I think you've said that on the podcast. I'm sure before. I have because it's like my favorite <laughs> thing because it just went to so many different high schools. And like I love uh, – old school, I love how that shit would spread. But like this app was – I remember having like – this is one of those things like kind of TikTok where I'd like download it to try to just understand what the fuck is happening and spend half a day like obsessed with it and then never – look. Yeah, and then yeah. immediately like I get a push notification from it a day later and be like, ew, and like immediately delete it from my yeah, phone. Yeah, get away. But I know. TikTok is pretty sick though. TikTok is honestly – Pretty sick. <laughs> Except that I guess it's like mostly used for child pornography now. Oh, that is not why I called it sick. <laughs> and I don't know why I'm talking as if I'm <laughs> yeah. doing scare quotes right now. <laughs> yeah. You are, that is uh, uh, implicating <laughs> Impossible to quote. Come at me, you quote accounts. You can't get that one. <laughs> come, come right at him for the child porn. So, um, so this this confession on here I love because it's so con- it has the words left and alone and is the main reason I'm sharing it but it's so bizarre and confusing and there's a photo of like a s- terrifying statue of an angel in the background yeah they would like randomly you just sort of type it in and it would w- depending on the location and the like language you were using it would just like apply a random image to the background it was honestly like again very fun for an hour right um, but this confession says. There's a quote first that says, I remember the day you told me you were leaving and the makeup running down your face. Um, and then after the quote, it says, how I feel you left me and I had to live each Blink-182 song, high, alone, even lived out my ringtone, 182 and Yellow Wolf. Hmm. Um, so I don't know if those are lyrics from the Yellow Wolf song or... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, all I know is that it is a very confusing word jumble. And I like thinking about how hopefully one day we'll get Yellow Wolf on the pod. Oh, it's going to happen, man. Look, if we got Mark Hoppus, we can get Yellow Wolf. Like, at this point, I feel invincible. <laughs> You'd think, and yet we, we couldn't even get a single guest this week. I know, week, so. and yet, in the wake. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, yeah, um, okay, so up next, this song is called, I think it's called Left Alone. Was, yeah, yeah, the song's called Left Alone. The band is called Obscuratas. And okay. Look. I assume that this is the what other is age group up that like with this video too. <laughs> I assume this is the age group that like someone's friends with these guys or something, but I, I just find this very depressing and like this is this is sort of why I like the song Left Alone by Blink Money too, because it's not this I just something about old timers playing pop punk is so depressing to me. I lo- like uh. I, I feel very differently about this video, but perhaps you should play it and then we can describe it to people. Yeah. So it's shot on like uh, a Vaseline drenched like first generation Go- GoPro. Yeah, a GoPro that's been used for colonoscopies prior to this. There's definitely some pre cum on this GoPro. <laughs> so, but it's just like they're playing so slow. <laughs> And the video is, like, clearly just, like, one of them got this gadget. So these are, like, (laughs) definitely dads, and it's, like, there's a camera set up for when they're, you know, like, pulling gear out of their hatchback and then, you know, getting set up in the studio. But the the first shot of them in the practice space is, like, you know, they're testing guitars, everything's getting ready, and, like, behind the singer is clearly one of their kids up on a stool just playing Nintendo DS. Like... (laughs) Which I love. Like, to me, this is, like, super charming. And then later on in the video, the kid's kind of mugging for the camera. This is fun. Like, if you were this kid, what a, what a fun thing to be able to do with your dad. No, the kids think that it sucks. That's why they're playing video games. No, but this kid is going to look back on See, this. See, you have the dad... No, you have the dad mind where the dad is like, this is so special and powerful. And the kid's like, ugh. <laughs> There's no Wi-Fi here. I can't play Fortnite. I have to fucking <laughs> right. play my old games. Like, I don't know. I think 
I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, it's not up to us to decide for these children. Well, yeah, maybe but. we can comment and say, like, or hopefully we can check back in a couple of years and see how the kid feels about this memory. I just feel like this is one of those things <laughs> you hate it at the time, like everything that your parents, like, make you do right. or try to share with you as an experience. And then later on you think, like, oh, it's like... You know, really nice that, like, my dad brought me with him when, like, most dads would be like, this is my, you know, you'd just be like, I'm cranking beers with the boys, you know? <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> I guess. I think it's I mean, nice, man. I just think it's a strange, like, more accurate picture of mortality that I don't like to look at right now. <laughs> right. Um, but another thing in the sort of the, the off-topic section is this is a song called Left Alone Again. And it's by, I guess, what's described as one-hit wonder pop punk from Sweden from 1996. And this is so sick. Okay. And I always talk about this with my friend Ryan from Mint Records and Hockey Dad, of how we our dream is to do, like, a killed-by-death compilation of, like, long-lost one-hit wonder pop punk bands. <laughs> you know, like, like local CDR only um, pop punk is like I'm, oh, I'm obsessed yeah, yeah. with hearing this kind of like '90s lost pop punk that never got famous. Well, we talk about we, this is yeah. Funny That's how, like, so good. Because, the, like, these guys are kind of... The, the photo's blurry, but I'm guessing that they're probably dressed more like skate punk kind of guys. But then because the Exploding Hearts happened, everyone still makes this music, but just, like, dresses like they're from Greece. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. That, uh, dude, but I'm sorry. I was just, like, thinking about your, um, like, CDR comp idea. And I, I there's got to be something in there, even if it's just, like... I would love to know what the, like, sickest band in this vein, this, like, CDR vein that, like, no one really cared about, um, like, that really no one cared about uh, from everyone's city. Like, what was it for you growing up? Like, I'm trying to think, like, who... Yeah. If I had to put forward one band from high school that I only have CDRs of, like, who would that actually be? Yeah, yeah. Because I still have I all those CDRs. Um I, I, there's something, or maybe there's something it's not there. even CDRs. It's like uh, it's professionally pressed CDs that that is still in someone's parents' basement. Yeah, you still got 500 copies of them shrink wrapped in the, someone's basement. The long lost one for for Ryan and I is this band called Pushcart. That was like a Christian pop punk band from like late 90s. It's a sick pop punk band name too. It's a sick pop punk band name, and apparently they had mini trampolines on stage when what? they were playing at Tom Fest, the Christian punk fest. Like I want to hear that so badly today because I bet you it rules. Although maybe it doesn't. Mm. Maybe all the songs are like pro life or something. <laughs> you might be like, oh <laughs> no. So, anyways, uh, I have a really important question for you right now. Uh huh. Um, I hope that you're ready to sort of face this quandary, both spiritually and intellectually. I am. Um, I am. The question. The question is, mm-hmm. what if what if Tom DeLonge wrote the song? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I don't. I, I wasn't prepared for that one. I thought um, it was just going to be, what if the song had a guitar solo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same guy. Okay, cool. It's Little, little Red Guitars. Um, he keeps, like, deleting all of his videos and starting a new account. So he's now on Little Red Guitars 69, which is almost the sex number, of course, <sighs> but down. not quite. Pretty, I guess he's just too mature to really go full sex numb. Um, but so <laughs> also all of his videos are always comments disabled because everyone's so mean to him. What? Um yeah, and and then I was reading some stuff on Reddit that people were being mean to him on there, which like I don't want to get into it, but come on, he just he he just uploads terrible videos, but it gives us stuff to talk about. It's fine. Stop cyberbullying, uh, little red guitars. Mm-hmm. You stick to Whisper or Secret or whatever. <laughs> yeah, or Curious Cat seems to be an anonymous bullying. Everyone, method. You, that is weird. Anyway, it's fine. Yeah, don't those people know what happened to the cat mm-hmm. from curiosity? They've learned nothing. 
<laughs> so this is what if Tom DeLonge wrote it. I'm going to give you a little spoiler. Um, basically, if Tom DeLonge wrote it, it would sound identical to the regular <laughs> version, but just with a little bit more guitar. Okay. <laughs> Glad the full intro's in here. I'm just gonna <laughs> skip ahead of it. I think he's playing octaves or something, but it, it, the song is so compressed you can't even tell. Yeah, and certainly like coming through your speakers through Skype to my shitty earbuds. Uh, it just sounds like a <laughs> like a crunchier version of the song. Yeah. <laughs> like a tiny bit of like YouTube style noodling. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, so basically if Tom DeLonge wrote it, um, he would have written it exactly the same, same arrangement, same song, same everything, except just like some very faint noodling over the top. So that's, that's what Tom DeLonge would have done. Okay, cool. Um, just a bit of a vampire update here. I was just texted by my friend Joe Lasco saying my vampire sense is tingling. Uh, so he's out of his coffin. Um, you know, it's still still bright here in Toronto. So hope he's okay. Um, Wait, did did he just text you that not knowing? Well, I suspect that there might be a mole in my house, uh, <laughs> right. uh, sending him uh, uh, coffin texts. Does he like uh, Vampire Weekend? Or? I don't. Uh, I, I don't know where to continue that joke, and I don't know if he does realistically. So uh, I'll just say, "Well, I just ask him. I, I, just be like, do you like Vampire Weekend?'" Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check it. That'll be the next, <laughs> the next Joe Lasco update <laughs> coming at you hot. So wait, did he actually sleep in a coffin? I'll be honest. Or? He admitted that he didn't, and then periodically, it's one of those things where he's like, you know, but I did, and and you can't tell. I can't tell. I I, I kind of like. In in my heart, I believe that he did sleep in a coffin, yes. Right. Um, okay, well, while we're waiting to find out if your vampire friend likes Vampire Weekend, I'm guessing I'm guessing not too many of your friends like Vampire Weekend, but Is that, I can't tell um, if that's like a diss or that's good like what Not if, really. I think no, I'm just I'm just acknowledging the the uh, tomato tomato dynamic that we've spent so long establishing. <laughs> okay. Here. I'll do. I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll get a full update from like the whole fam, uh, maybe over the weekend, and get back to you. Yeah, I mean, I know that Nicole's down with the V dub, yeah. but I don't know if anyone else. Did. Um, so th- <laughs> this, this is definitely the most engaging part of the podcast. Is like <laughs> just who Sam's my texting his friends. Likes <laughs> <laughs> Vampire Weekend. Yeah. Um, so this song, I think we're going to realize, though, despite it having, like, some Cure vibes and just some, like, stadium goth feeling to it, is very bro actually. Um, and the next thing I'm going to show you is particularly surprising. So this is Julian Winans has uploaded, like, what feels like a promotional paintball video soundtrack by the song. Cool. <laughs> At first I thought it was, like, troops getting ready, <laughs> but then I realized that they were shooting paint. I mean, these are still troops, and we have to respect them. Shoot them more, bro. No, no. Shoot them more. It doesn't matter. It's paintball. It's a fucking game. Yeah. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> it's like all... <laughs> That's true. In fact, those are the only troops I really 100% can get behind is paintball troops. Because <laughs> paintball is like, let's see what happens. This like, this guy's friends are so uninteresting that he could only that he wanted to include some talking to show that they're sort of like playful with the video, but all he could get was his friend being like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Fucking shoot the paintball. <laughs> the classic, yeah. No, but, classic paintball banter. I like paint, paintball troops are the only ones that I respect because they they sort of live by the credo that art is war. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> is it like could you be like a could you be like a modern artist who just <laughs> does paintball Ooh. on like a wall? And, and yeah, and it's all about um, you know the eternal nature of conflict. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, like you do. Paintings of war scenes, but you do it with a paintball gun. Right. Damn, I should be a street artist. You really should. Well, you should rebrand yourself. I could yourself. do a Blink-182 album cover. 
Yeah. You could be called, your tag could be like Cummy, you know? <laughs> Who is Cummy? <laughs> I was, uh, we were hit by, I think it was my friend when we were walking around to get a Slurpee in Abbotsford, pre, uh, pre Long Johns, but we were walking around <laughs> to get a Slurpee and, and we got drive by a paintball gun and my friend got hit. That kind of sucks, actually. Yeah, they were really bummed about it, but I think it's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> in retrospect. When I think about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and at the time I thought it was funny, too. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> So they don't play this song live, and everyone on Reddit thinks it's because Mark can't sing it. Um, they think that he, it's too high of a register for him, which got me thinking, too. Like, what if Mark and Matt actually can't sing the same key, but him and Tom could? Wait, say that again? What if... Like, l- people think that Left Alone is too high for for Mark to sing live, and Matt Skiba obviously is, like, crushing it. So what if, what if like, Matt's preferred key is oh, not that's compatible with Mark's? I mean, I'm sure that Matt has to kowtow to Mark's <laughs> preference. Uh, well, especially like live. Mark generally is Mark's generally singing lower lately. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's weird. But anyways, someone has uploaded a video. TDLV Music has uploaded a video of it tuned lower. So I was thinking <laughs> we could imagine Mark singing it live over this lower tuning because this is in this is in drop C. The original is in drop D, which is already pretty aggro. How is this six um, minutes long? C. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think we'll watch the whole thing. We I didn't should. notice that. <laughs> I want to know what sort of strange there's places so, they take There's it. like three minutes of uh, subscribe to this video um, kind of thing. But this is what it sounds like lower. Oh, they've got lightning at the start. Is what what they have done is the best Creed song, and that it's even better than one. Is one is one your one? That's one's one's my one. What's your one? I mean, I could I could pretend like that I'm into the deep cuts, but I think Higher is like fucking the best song of all time. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm saying one just to like maybe have a different opinion, but it's obviously to seem like a you want to seem like you're a Creed head, which I respect. I I feel like it was a single. (laughs) But I definitely... I think it was, too. Yeah. I also think With Alms Water Open is really good. Yeah. They're good. Look at um, Creed, in fact, also rocks. But I didn't even realize this was a drop D song, and that already is giving me, like, metalcore vibes. And then hearing it this low, I'm just like... I like this song as, like, a sprightly little pop, pop ditty, not like a crunchy... I mean, there's a bit of crunch in the original, but I don't know. I don't think I want it to be. No, this, this is low. the best version. <laughs> this is <laughs> what happens in the last three minutes. Here. <laughs> well, there's like this looping? MIDI version. Yeah, well, this is MIDI now. <laughs> Weird. Sick. <laughs> um, okay, well then, let's get into covers. If you're gonna be like that, <laughs> a Creed fan. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Oh, okay, wait. Can I pee quickly? Quick update, though, from uh, the vampire, Joe Lasco, is uh, that uh, Vampire Weekend stole his swag, uh, but he used to like them. Pre Rostum departure is thumbs up emoji. I, I honestly don't know what that sentence means. Right. So he's not down with FOTB. I mean, that's what is th- that's what fair. Is- that's for another day. Okay. It's for another okay. day. You could do another Vampire Weekend exclusive, you weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this has fucked up my whole order that we were just talking about Creed, but I got to play this one first because I just I I literally cannot believe this cover. It is so good, and it's not even the most ridiculous one I've found. But I'm so excited. So this is uploaded by someone named Messiah's eighty four. Oh, so this is like your people, eh? <laughs> I guess, but also it's like Messiah. It's not like possessive. It's Messiah's multiple. Mm. 
So oh, I don't so know. that's I don't actually you against in... you. Yeah, that's not really. That's kind of sketchy uh, theology, buddy. Um, yeah. <laughs> but like this guy looks like he's from Metal Gear Solid or something. Like he looks like a video game character. <laughs> he's so fucking buff. He's like insanely buff, and he has like the Wolverine. Um, uh, Sideburns that turn into like a chin strap beard. Yeah, and like kind of a faux hawk, and he's like tattooed. He's so fucking strong and buff. <laughs> and, uh, it sounds like this. This <laughs> sounds like crazy. So Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> So good. That's that's the definitive version of the song. Like nothing you play it is really, gonna be that good. It really is. Also, like adding because I didn't really watch too much of this before. I just knew that I needed to kind of save it and get excited. Mm. Um, but I love that to show that he's doing two different vocal parts. It, it reminds me so much of customizing a character in a video game because it's like he's just wearing the tank top and then he's got the hoodie. But then he's wearing <laughs> a hoodie and a leather jacket over top. Like I feel like I'm customizing a character while I watch this. Yeah. I bet he's got good stats. Oh man, he's so fucking macho. He also like Mas- I really <laughs> love the the sort of like stanky, I mean definitively American vocal delivery matched with like uh, like a kind of unplaceable accent that only comes out sort of on certain words. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's definitely like a Spanish guy doing an impression of, like, you know, a, a guy from wherever the fuck. Where are Creed from? Uh, Florida, I think. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, he, this guy, this uh, Messiah's guy looks like he travels a lot. He's got a lot of travel vlogs. But, my God. Also, people who cover... Um, People who, like, do these, like, high production covers love to have as many multi-shots as possible. Like, there's so many cuts in this. <laughs> yeah. There's, like, but, like, like also he must some, have filmed it, like, seven times. And, but, like, also some really illogical cutting. Like, there's a really long shot early on of him just kind of nodding and preparing to sing in the vocal shot. Where you're like, <laughs> you don't need to cut to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not a lot. Also, yeah, you're right. Tallahassee, Florida for... Uh, <laughs> Hell you know yeah. what sucks, man? Like, uh, like when you search, at least like I, I know Google results are like personalized or whatever. But like, when I search Creed, the band Creed is not on the first page of Google results. Oh, you get boxed the boxer. I get, I get, <laughs> I get the boxer. Yeah, the boxer Creed, <laughs> and the films about the boxer Creed. <laughs> Um, damn, that sucks. Maybe it's because they've fallen. That's what I'm thinking. The public well, eye. They, they had that so very notorious sort of um, like radio promo tour where they ended up giving away all the tickets to these stadium shows before they just canceled it entirely. So, yeah. hard times. Famously damn. hard times for Scott himself. We gotta get Scott on the pod. Yo, yes. that's, that's the real Scott that we that's, need. Yeah, yes. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right, well, a little palate cleanser. I'm going to play you the Molotov cocktail piano cover because they are always good, these co- these piano ones. Minimal. It's a great melody, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, like that. That does show you they're so good at writing fucking melodies. It's crazy. They're uh, they're talented. I feel like uh, they're really gonna go places. You know. <laughs> yeah, onto Blink One Fifty Five. <laughs> yeah, that's it. yeah. This is definitely the the highest uh, achievement of Mark's life. I'm sure. This one is described as acoustic punk, mm. but it's like a a k u s t i k. Um, and it's uploaded by Sketza, but the user's name is Azin, A-Z-I-N. Mm. It sounds like this. Vanessa Carlton? Carlton. Yeah, I, I will say this. Not acoustic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> the, the definition of acoustic has been stretched, and I blame Nirvana mostly for That's that. That's true. It <laughs> just hasn't been the same since that guitar solo. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, also, uh, probably not great, I'll say. Not a very good cover. I feel like I'm in a, um, like a really good mood and like loving this song, and also it's it's overall like underexposed for me. So I thought that was that was great. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that's fair. Um, let's see if you like this. This is truly <laughs> acoustic. Right. I don't. I don't um, mean to be is, like. <laughs> that's not a challenge. <laughs> you are challenge. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's just say that uh, this is this is Jeremy Asuncion, and the uh, comment says. Your deeper tone sounded really good, but I would be cautious on those high <laughs> notes. <laughs> okay, like, cool. This is an acoustic uh, guy. Let's throw caution in the wind here. <laughs> I think he's pa- At the 41 second mark, I think he literally makes a cut. What? I think he fucked it up and punches it in. <laughs> like, go to like 38 seconds, and there's a cut. There's oh, he punches <laughs> in! <laughs> that's, a, that's dedication to the craft wow. right there. Wow, what? <laughs> I mean, I honestly really like that I one. It it sounds like I, had a, I feel bad. I had an involuntary sort of reaction to the first <laughs> Hino because um, it was sort of unexpected because it actually seemed like, or sorry, not the first Hino because the first time he kind of hit it and I felt like <laughs> it's just confidence. That's all it is, right? Like I, I clearly yeah. he's demonstrated that it's in his range, um, but I think he's just like, you know, he's just being too cautious. <laughs> <laughs> the rip. The riff is with arms wide open, isn't it? it, it I'm, 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 yeah, like the Creed thing is so obvious now, and that's why we like it. Yeah. Blue, do, do, do. It's the same. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh. <laughs> also, I don't know if I've seen this video before, but it's fucking sick. Uh, it's like he's just like in a field, right? Yeah. Oh, oh it's so good. good. <laughs> <laughs> Cool jacket. Like, honestly, I'm really. I, I, as we've established, jackets are the first thing that <laughs> yeah. you notice. And this is a. I would wear this jacket. Wow. Absolutely. Well, maybe I'm going to go and buy this jacket to impress you. Yo, this jacket is cool as shit. 
<laughs> it's actually very cool. I feel like if I um, showed up with this jacket, um, you would maybe would like would you respect me more? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it looks like it's one of those Reigns, the company Reigns jackets. I don't even know what that is. I don't know if that existed back then. Um, but yeah, it's definitely okay. So it's the with arms wide open riff. That kind like. I went into this thinking I just sincerely liked it as a good pop song, but now there's all these, like, irony layers that are confusing but I don't, me. Uh, sorry, like, just to be um, not ironic here for a second, With Arms Wide Open is a good song. No, I know that. So I, I agree with you, but it's it also, ironically. like... No, but there's still, like, baggage that comes with That's it. That's fair, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah, it's not like... You can't just, like, go up to someone and be like, yeah, With Arms Wide Open's a great song. I'm a professional music writer, <laughs> and I'm friends with punks, and I'm cool. <laughs> you know, it's, like, too too confusing. Um, okay, I'm going to try to power through these. I know you got you got to have dinner with some CEOs. Today. <laughs> it's important. i got to gotta talk a lot about real estate. <laughs> um, but there's, there's another guy. I can't say his name, but I want to get through the acoustic section quickly. Um, this is um, someone from Brazil. I don't know uh, if you want to try reading this. I'm definitely not going to try. There's a lot of accents on there. Too many accents. Uh, uh, Let's just... Yeah, never mind. Don't worry about it. Um, It's on YouTube. If you just search search Brazil on YouTube, you'll find this guy if you want to watch it. Yeah, Yoa Andre Silva Gamma. There you go. Try to give someone credit. Another guy with, like, so many camera cuts. watching the video earlier but it's intense <laughs> it's looking it's at it's a lot guitar. of eye contact too uh, well not until the chorus like he saves it for the chorus and then he just fucking stares right into your soul too intimate um, like it's way too intimate like the minute that because I was looking <laughs> earlier and so when I looked at it it was all of a sudden we were locking eyes <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very intimate. And also someone has commented, when puberty hits, that mustache is going to look killer. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Little on. guy. Leave this guy alone yeah. here. Um, okay, I'm going to play you one more acoustic because we gotta, we got we to gotta hear a really solid acoustic. And, of course, we can always depend on our boy Lucas D mm. to deliver. Uh, the the one man proclaimers, as I like to call him, <laughs> starting right now. Um, and he wrote, you make it happen this is a for new, sure. This is a new cover for my best buddy because he loves the song so much. Lucas is written with a smile. That's so cute, Lucas. Out. I was just like, I was just being swept just away enjoying. by his dreamy pipes. He's uh, Lucas I D. Truly, is the one man proclaimers, as you have now proclaimed him. Right? I mean, what else? How else can you put it? He's so good, he's so, and he's just like so nice. I bet he's like a really nice person. There, uh, he is, and you can even tell in the comments because he's got a regular Simon Cowell in his comments here. Uh, Ricardo Anibal one year ago wrote. So much voice effects, poor and unpowered voice. Sorry, it's no for me today. First of all, Ricardo, go fuck yourself, okay? Leave Lucas D alone. He is the one-man proclaimers. But he replies, thanks for the feedback. 
I would try to use less effects in the next videos. Aw, Lucas D. Uh-huh. Just, you know, hearing everyone out. He's so cute. He's a sweet, sweet boy. Okay. And Are you ready? I feel like maybe he's very small. Like, the guitar looks super big on him. <laughs> yeah. He's small, but also, like, very... Like, that shirt is, like... Fits nicely. Yeah, no, no. I mean? he's, he, like, it's, I, I didn't mean small as a criticism as someone who's definitely not no. small, but, you know... <laughs> It's potentially been accused of smallness in the past. <laughs> Erroneously. I feel like he might be Sam-sized. I No, guitars are now not that know. small on me, or that big now on me. I wanna see, now I want to see, uh, see Lucas D and Sam stats. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look up his height. I wonder if he's got uh, Lucas D height. I'm friends with him on Facebook. Oh, so just message him and ask him his height in feet. I can't remember his actual last name. My Facebook's too confusing now. <laughs> I'm just trying to get this Marine named Mark Hoppus to write me back. How fucking hard is I that? I don't know, man. Turns out pretty hard. Harder oh, to get on the pod than actual Mark Hoppus is Mark Hoppus the Marine. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for <laughs> the greatest cover? <laughs> this is a, such a great genre of video where it's... Oh, um, practice space? L- no, I think it's like local dive bar cover oh. band on a Tuesday night with just like the security cam footage. Um, this is the band Star 67, they're called. Have we played this band before? <laughs> no, we've played like very similar bands. <laughs> I guess that's it. Well, they've got a lot of covers. Um, yeah, they've covered like all the hits. Santeria. <laughs> and <laughs> that's the only hit, man. That's, <laughs> that's really the, the only, only hit that matters. Need. Man, I love that we live in an era where Lon- Lana Del Rey covered Sublime. It's, and everyone's just like, yeah, that's normal. Yeah, it's the best time. So good. Um, so, okay, so I don't, I, they don't have any info on their, on their YouTube at all. I can't even figure out where this is or what. But the band is called Family Reunion. Um, <laughs> or is the band called Star 67 or is the band called Family Reunion? Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, now I'm even more confused. All of these videos are tagged as Family Reunion. Maybe the bar is called Star 67. Ah. Could that be it? I don't know. Look, there's a band called Star 67 from Madison, Wisconsin that is maybe these people. Uh, and they are like Madison's premier... Um, we are Madison's oh, yeah, most yeah. exciting throwback cover band, guaranteed to put on an entertaining and high-energy show, playing nothing but crowd favorites from the 90s and early 2000s. I do not think Left Alone is a crowd favorite from that particular well, era. But but I've just clicked on... I was on a event page listing Family Reunion Live, and then I clicked Star 67, and the band seems to be called that also? Oh, I don't understand. I'm so confused. We're going to have to They're go to Madison, Wisconsin to figure this one out. I think that's where uh, Sexual Jumanji lives, so maybe I'll have to okay, ask him yeah, to, go, some, to go check it do out. Some do some well, on-the-street reporting. they got a couple of uh, a couple of big shows coming up. Um, they're playing uh, Star 67 at Bowl at Vard's Car Night is happening. Uh, it looks at a, uh, a bowling alley in Madison. And then they are doing a Foo Fighters tribute called Fresh Fighters. So that's something wow. to look forward to. If you're in, in is Madison. Star 67, like, there's multiple bands called Star 67. Is that a reference? Like, I know Star 69 is a thing. Uh, I, when you want to see who called you. I'm really uh, putting a lot of time into this one, eh? It's really, well, it's because I'm so obsessed with how it sounds. So, I mean, this band is, like, also looks to be entirely different people than the band picture I just saw. Mm. Um, oh, Star 67 is how you block a number. So if someone <laughs> wow. crank calls you, it's very aggressive. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> That's probably what Mark Hoppus did to me. <laughs> yeah, right you after. were absolutely Star sixty seven. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what Star sixty eight is. The the sexual. Uh, they probably don't do it. It's thing. like how uh, in North America buildings typically don't have a thirteenth floor. Right. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, either Star sixty seven or Family Reunion. I'm not really sure. Covering Left Alone, presumably in Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, I see Wisco in the back, so it is at the venue that they always play at, I guess. Um, And it sounds like this.
I mean, definitely, you know, the, the best band to do that in Madison, Wisconsin, probably. Yeah, I would think so. At least the best band called Star 67 or Family Reunion yeah. to do that at the Wisco in what Madison, Wisconsin on this particular Exactly, night. yeah. I think that's fair. We can definitively <laughs> say that. We've said a lot of definitive things that we didn't really mean on this podcast, but that is – you take that to the bank. It sounds so underwater. I wonder if there's just like a feed in the bar. It's just fucked how I now want to watch every single one of these videos. <laughs> well, on they have a lot page. of them, man. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> that's the rest of your night for sure. <sighs> well, that's it for covers. Oh, really? I mean, there's more if you want. I'll play you. Okay, I'll play, play you one, one more. more. You, just, you sounded so <laughs> deflated about it. <laughs> I mean, I've been sort of self-editing. And I feel like I shouldn't have started with the Creed one because it was too it fucked. It was too good. Well, let's let's do let's do let's do two more. Okay, okay. Don't click that one. I okay, sent you that. Okay. Let me see. Let Who me see what am I, I asking? But it's just like you know, you just sounded so sad. Well, I am sad. You're leaving me, and now I'm gonna be alone with. Oh yeah, I gotta <laughs> play this guy. I forgot. Okay, no, this is actually really important. Okay, good. This is gonna take a second. This guy, Mark Eichner. Um, he he aggregated our interview. Oh. That's why I wanted to talk about him. <laughs> He's like he played. Uh, it's so he funny to though? hear. He, like so, who has more ethics? He did. Did he and he, or Mark Eichner. Oh, Mark Eichner has way more ethics. But I love that he does. He did the uh, um, Rob Wisman on Twitter always has this viral joke about how every YouTube thumbnail looks like Uber, a certain Uber way. Uber driver sucks like, me off. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like the the Max Res default for this one is so funny because it's like <laughs> it's just so YouTubey. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely uh, yeah. Uber driver sucked me off. Rob Wishman joke. Um, and yeah, we've made fun of this guy's covers before, which is even funnier because he was did not make fun of us at all. Taking um, the high road. He basically he basically like took notes from the interview. I'm sure he didn't listen to the whole pod because you, you just can tell. But it's just really funny to hear him talk about it. So here's the stuff. You know, he said like really aggressive stuff. Some probably even more poppy than blame it on my youth. This is a little intro. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another video. I just wanted to share what Mark Hoppus just revealed about the new album on the Blink 155 podcast. <laughs> they had a telephone interview with Does Mark Hoppus. Does that Hoppus mean that, like, wherever and, he's uh, from, they call yeah, him Blink 182? Yeah, I just wanted to do a quick video about... Yeah, that is, that's a whole thing. That's a whole debate. Actually, I don't know, because I thought it was Blink 182 That's what I'm saying. That, I, I, think, I thought yeah. that was the beginning and end of the debate, but it feels like we've uncut... Like, there's no way... Unless he just doesn't get the joke and he thinks that that's just like... <laughs> he says our name at the end, so let's hear what he does the second time. More texts, more things changed for this record than everything since the Untitled album. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited about the new album and I hope we get a release date soon. We have to wait what we get. And yeah, that's it for the video. You can check out the um, telephone interview on um, the link in the description. Blink... 155. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumb up. I would really... Yeah, I wonder if he says Blink 182 That's, as yeah. well. I mean, we'll never know. There's no way that he's ever <laughs> we'll said it. Know. But uh, I just want to say, Mark, <laughs> c thank you uh, for um, respecting us. I thought it was a little disrespectful how he kept specifying that it was a phone interview. Like, we didn't, like, like you don't need to say that necessarily. <laughs> it was still an interview on the show. You don't need to be, like, a telephone interview. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> it's, we interviewed Mark Hoppus. Like, we got him and you right, didn't. Right, the caveats so. are, uh, are <laughs> unnecessary. So here's uh, this guy with his cover of Blink-182 uh, left alone. He's German, by the way. Right. Eyes are open, words are spoken. Don't want to say anything about one of my peers. I want to say so. that I thought it was great. I'm apparently just a completely like brainwashed on this song. 
Like it, I feel yeah. like there was a lot of threatening um, sort of <laughs> remarks from you earlier. But I, have you just edited out all the like truly heinous shit? No, I mean I don't. I thought that this was like a cool punk song, but now I just realized it's another fucking normie California song. Okay, so, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, you have had a, a, a difficult journey. <laughs> not too bad. Okay, let's end with uh, you know as we've said earlier, there's not nearly enough female energy on here. So let's end with Danielle Minch. Okay. Um, and I don't know how to preface this one. I think there's Minch is a, a lot great of last name, eh? Yeah, it really is. I had a is. friend like that's one of those things like. If you have a friend whose name is Minch, like you've never called them by their first. There are entire groups of people that have no idea that her first name is Danielle. Right. <laughs> oh, I know what was what ma- made me mad about this one is the first comment from Jake Grimes is uh, my daughter wanted to say this. You are pretty. You are a great singer, and I like your hair. She loves the new Blink record, and she's only seven. So that's really cool. She was singing along with you. I told her, see, girls can rock too. Like, to to tell a seven-year-old, see, girls can rock too, is like, she didn't ever have the, yeah, the idea that they could That's like, a, has the picture he already crushed her? I mean, maybe, I guess, but like, you know. It's possible. <laughs> like, to be like, see? Like, you know, <laughs> to a seven-year-old? Yeah. The kid is like, oh, I hadn't conceived of the limitations of my gender. Thank you. Now I realize that it's a a caveat when I want to rock out. (laughs) Um, That's great. Really good for a girl. (laughs) Yeah. So let's hear how Danielle Minch does. Oh, yeah. This is what. Okay. The first two seconds of the video have like four jump cuts. It's like a Godard (laughs) film. (laughs) It's amazing. Oh, wow. A lot happening there. It's so good. I'm glad we did we did two more and they were both very important. They were important. I didn't take more ac- I didn't the notes that you emailed me earlier weren't accurate enough for me to remember <laughs> which was important and which wasn't. That's fine. That's my fault, man. I I'll try to I love that she was not, not only was she like so ADD with the camera work. Like there's this video has like so much going on a visually. A lot of formats, a lot of picture in picture. <laughs> It, like, it's funny, but it also actually does make it more interesting. But she's sick at guitar. Like, she's doing cool... She's sort of mimicking the synth in a cool way, where it's not just, like, a lazy acoustic cover. And is she wearing a shirt that says Blink Sucks? Am I mistaken, or is that what her shirt Wait, says? I don't know. I've already moved on to her own... Uh, something Sucks. She's got a band called Behind the Facade, which, like, I'm worried to play, because it would maybe ruin the... Yeah, let's let's just... Let's uh, leave it here. You know. But um, anyway, if you like that, Something Sucks. Uh, hard to say. I mean, it'd be cool if it was Blink Sucks. That would be great. Anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I'm into it. But no, that was that, awesome. I hope that Jake Grimes' daughter can really uh, thrive despite the limitations being placed on her at such an early age. <laughs> I hope so. I think it says Pop Punk Sucks. It's, it's, uh, it's a P. Oh, I thought it was a... Oh, maybe that's mm. it. Anyway, this is a deep visual exploration of a video no one can see. But, you know, uh, thank you, uh, Danielle Minch, for proving that, look, girls... Can rock. <laughs> Finally, someone did oh, it. <laughs> okay, final thoughts. I didn't realize that I liked this because it was a Creed song, but now I'm back into my sort of just wanting to earnestly like something and then deconstructing it to the point where there's now irony baggage. <laughs> right. I, I, at least you tried. At least you tried. <laughs> um, I thought the song was good, and now I think it's better, and also I'm <laughs> going to listen to Creed later. 
And so I would <laughs> call that uh, a, a victory. And I'm also going to listen to Left Alone, the the band. Hell yeah! <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm going to spend some time with that like Creed guys YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you send me the highlights for sure? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And send, send me your favorite Star sixty seven videos. <laughs> All right, great. And now we are right together. <laughs> Creed. 